All right, so in this video, we're going to do our setup for carry moto uh, so that we can mill parts on the Tormach CNC machine. So the first thing that you need to do uh, to be able to um, create the toolpaths in Onshape is to go to the App Store and download or, or subscribe to Kiri Moto. So we'll click on the App Store, go to the Kiri, type in Kiri, K-I-R-I, and you'll see there it is, Kiri Moto. If you simply click on that, and right here at the bottom it should say subscribe. Once you subscribe to that, you are good to go. So there's no cost, it's free, but we'll be all set. You need this in order to be able to generate toolpaths. So once you've subscribed to Kiri Moto, we're going to go back to Onshape, and we're going to go into a file that uh, we're going to um, cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into one of our team folders here, pull up the Swerve Drive, and, uh, and again, it doesn't really matter um, what, in fact, you'll see I'm already in Kirimoto here, um, it doesn't matter what file, if you're in an assembly or if you go into, say, any of these um, parts in any of the part studios, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm just going to stay here in the assembly. We're going to click the little plus arrow, plus thing down here, and we're going to go to Applications, Kirimoto. All right, now the first thing that it wants us to do is to bring in parts. Um, I'm going to ignore this for right now because um, we need to do some setup work first. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go here to setup and just kind of hover over this, click on machine, and then we're going to choose this any generic Linux CNC. Okay, and you'll see I already have under my devices, I have a Tormach 770. Um, I had to set this up, so um, I had to put in this code right here. Okay, and we're going to put that same code into um, yours. So we're going to click here on any generic Linux CNC. Okay, and then you're going to click customize. Okay, so we'll click customize on this. And then I'm going to erase all of this. So delete, and then you're going to put in the same information right here. Okay, I will post this, um, this exact code in the comments uh, on this video so that you can copy and paste it directly um, in there. So once you have um, done that, we're going to go up here. We're going to rename this thing instead of, instead of uh, generic. We'll call it our Tormach 770. And then we will go uh, this file extension. We want it to be, oops. we want it to be NC, NC. The volume for this is going to be 14 in the X direction. In the Y direction, it's going to be 7.5. And in the Z direction, it's going to be 13.25. Okay. The max spindle speed is going to be 10,000. And then again, once you have posted or you know uh, pasted this code in, then you should be able to click save and um, store that information. Now, one thing I um, will say to this is right now we're putting in a max spindle speed of 10,000. That's as fast as our machine can go. And then uh, you'll see here in the G code down here in the bottom that we are setting. So every time we create a file, it's going to set the speed to 10,000. Um, that's probably going to be okay, but um, there are going to be cases where we might have to adjust that, especially like when we're drilling something or something like that. So just know that we may have to adjust the speed, uh, but otherwise all the settings here are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just X out of this. You can click save and then you'll see, you'll get a, a new device under my devices. So since I already have that, I'm going to close out of that. So we're going to do machine, make sure that you're on your device. Everything should be set up the same as mine. So 14, 7.5, 13.25, 10,000 is the max spindle speed, and then this code right here. All right, so that's the machine that we're going to be using. The next thing that we have to do is we have to set up what we call profiles. Okay, um, depending on the bit that we're using, um, we're going to be cutting uh, in different ways. Okay, so... Um, most of this stuff we don't really have to mess with too much so like we're going to go ahead and create our first profile so we'll click tabs you'll see it's got some some measurements set up we're going to leave that alone stock we're going to leave that alone limits um, we are going to make sure that the z anchor says it's on the top we're going to leave all of no offsets z clearance is one that's uh so when the machine is moving around not cutting it's going to be one inch above the workpiece and then uh the z feed Okay, in this case, we're going to do um, we're going to do ten, and then in the X Y feed, we're going to go sixty. So this is that means it's going to be moving ten inches per minute in the um, in the setup there, uh, or ten inches per minute as it's moving in Z, and then it's going to be moving sixty inches per minute in the X and the Y. Okay, so uh, we're going to put that in just like that under uh, that's our uh, I'm sorry that's our limits, our output. We're going to make sure that conventional is checked 
and then ease down is checked. Okay, the rest of those you can leave alone. The origin, again, this is important. You need to do origin top. And then the offset from the origin, we're going to leave as 0, 0, 0. So in other words, we want to start the bit at the origin every time. Okay, so that's our um, origin. So origin top, 0, 0, 0. Okay, expert, we don't need to do anything there. And then profile, when you click on that, it brings up um, exactly what we're creating. So you don't have any profiles yet. So this one is going to be for a three flute. So I'll call it three flute 250 milling. When I say 250, I mean a quarter inch. Um, it's not going to let me put 0.25. So, so a three flute, that means it has three little cutters on the bit and uh, 250 milling, and then I'll hit save. Okay, now that's only if we're using a three flute bit. Again, that means it has three little cutting edges on the bit. If we don't have three cutting edges, we have to change the speeds. So um, we've already set most everything up, but here on the output, or I'm sorry, on the limits, now we're going to change this to 40. Okay, so now this one's going to be for a two flute. Okay, and again, this is all based on us cutting aluminum. Um, I'm not going to get into the equations to solve for these numbers, but uh, anyway, so we're going to set this one at 40, and then we're going to click profile, and we're going to call this a two flute. Okay, so we'll call that a two flute profile. Uh, let's see here, sorry. So it's a 40 profile. Click on that, two flute, 250 milling, and hit save. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing again on limits. This time we're going to change it to 20, and then profile, we're going to do a one flute. So now we have three different bits that we can um, use. So we've got the, um, the one flute, two flute, and three flute. And then we're going to, while we're, while we're working on things here and set up, we're going to go ahead and set up drilling operations as well. So for uh, limits, this time we're going to leave the Z anchor as top, the Z offset, zero. Uh, but what we want to happen, it, what we want to happen is that we want to have it actually punch through the bottom of the material. Since the, the drill bit has a pointed, uh, has a point on the end of it, if we just take it, the point to the bottom of the piece, it's not actually going to drill all the way through. So we'll have to um, make it punch through a little bit further. So we're just going to do like 0.1 okay so then that way it'll it'll punch through just a, a tenth of an inch and then we'll leave everything else the same except for the, the z feed we can leave alone and then xy feed it won't matter all right so we're going to leave that there the other thing that we'll have to do leave the origin alone all right profile we're going to call this one drilling okay so we'll just call that drilling and hit save so one quick little adjustment we need to make here is under setup and preferences. So when we've set all this, the, the profiles up, we've been specifying inches the whole time. And that's that's what we want. But our display is not going to show up in inches unless we um, change that. So if you go to setup and click on preferences, you can change the units to inches. And then that'll make your display kind of match what the machine settings are going to go for. Okay, so now that we've got the output set up for the machine, we need to tell the machine what tools we're going to be using. So under setup, we're going to go here to tools, and you'll see that I already have some tools listed in here, but we're going to go ahead and, and fix some of these. So the first one we're going to name, um, we're going to click plus, okay, for a new tool. All right, we'll just name this a, we'll start with the drill bits, and we'll do um, the uh, quarter inch drill. So we'll call it a quarter inch drill, and then we're going to put these same settings in here. Okay, so we're going to do, um, we're going to call this tool number one. Um, this is going to be a taper end. Okay, so this is going to be one divided by four. Drill. Okay, and then the diameter is a quarter inch. The length is one. That's fine. Um, the diameter is a quarter. The taper angle, um, I believe, is 118. Let's see what that looks like. No, that doesn't look like. So. It's going to be something somewhere around like, uh, like 72 ish or so. Okay, um, let's just make it 65. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to put it in at 65. And then uh, for uh, width and in inches, yeah, that's not zero. Okay, so it means it goes to a point. So this is all that we need for our quarter inch drill bit. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit save on that. And then that will show up up here. Okay, then we're going to do another one because we're going to need different sizes. So we're going to do, uh, this time it's going to be a 3 16 That's another bit that we use um, consistently. And pretty much everything stays the same except for this is no longer, uh, uh, let's 
see, it doesn't do the math for you in this one. So it's going to be 0 0.1875, 0 0.1875. And then you can leave everything else the same. Um, the length, yeah, that's fine. Uh, we'll hit save. And then that's going to be our 316, better, better name that 316th drill. And then we're going to do the same thing uh, with any other size drills, um, drill bits that we need. We'll have to add each one in as we need it. So um, I know that we use 532 seconds quite a bit. We use 316 sixteenths quite a bit. Uh, we use 1364 quite a bit, and then also a quarter inch quite a bit. So those would be drill bits that you would want to go ahead and put into the tool pad, or into the tools library here. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start putting in what we call end mills. And the main end mill that we use is uh, a quarter inch. So we'll do a quarter inch end mill. Okay, and then uh, this one, the, the end of it, the type is going to be an end mill. And you'll see it, it makes it flat on the bottom. And then here's the information that you need here. So, uh, so if this is a quarter inch bit, it's going to be 0.25. You can leave all of your tools as um, tool number one. That's, that's fine. Um, the diameter, again, is going to be 0.25. Okay, and then the length of the flute is going to be, this one matters a little bit. We'll, we'll go ahead and put like one. And that just means like the flute is the cutting area. So, um, you know, if you don't give it a very big cutting area, then it's going to throw a fit meaning it doesn't want to cut any deeper than the, the length of the flute. So we could do a one inch max cut with this one. All right, so uh, we'll leave that all the way it is and we'll hit save and then we should be all good to go with our tools. All right, so in the next video, we will go ahead and bring in parts and start setting up toolpaths.